and hook up with Brian Overton, the director of football operations and player personnel for ECU. No relation to Michael, who's uh, to my left, Brian, that I know of. But uh, how you doing, man? Good to have you on. Doing good, Trent. Uh, glad to be with you this morning. Hey, 71 days, Brian, uh, until kickoff with ECU in North Carolina Central. The kickoff time announced on Thursday by the AAC, set for 8 o'clock. I cannot recall since I've been here, Brian, uh, an 8 o'clock start time for a home opener at Downey Ficklin. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I think uh, I'll tell you who else is excited about it is our kids. <laughs> <laughs> when they found out yesterday, they were pretty pumped up about it. Of course, they're trying to, you know, kind of like the fans are, miss a little bit of the heat during that time of year. They like playing at night early in the year, a little bit cooler. Um, lets them go a little bit longer out there before they wear down. But, uh, yeah, they're excited about it. Uh, we were kind of in limbo on it for a long time because – uh, if, if your listeners or viewers don't know anything about much about the ESPN contract, if you get an ESPN three slot, then they give you the flexibility to set the game time, uh, and that's what we were expecting to get, and uh, which is good for us. ESPN News came in and picked it up, so when they picked it up, they were in control of the game time, and uh, they wanted us in that in that. Uh, in that night slot, and we're, uh, we're excited about it. Well, I was going to ask you, you kind of answered my question, and for those that don't know, how, how much influence does ECU have and you guys as coaches have on when some of these game times are announced? Well, you can you can submit requests to the conference. It's pretty much that way in every league. Uh, you can submit requests for certain things. A good example is homecoming. If you have certain events going on in the morning and things like that, you obviously want to request probably a middle afternoon or later in the evening game just to get in all your events so you're not running up right to the game time to give your fans a chance to get into the stadium and things like that. So you can actually, you can definitely make requests to the conference. They pass those along to ESPN on a need uh, need by need basis. Uh, sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. But the only time you really have total control of the kickoff time most of the time is when you get an ESPN three slot. Uh, other than that, now with the ESPN contract, if it's on any other their other uh, affiliates or family networks, uh, they totally control the game time. Brian Overton, ECU's Director of Football Operations and Player Personnel, joining us here on Talk of the Town, 17 minutes past the top of the hour. Brian, uh, right now, kind of the dog days of summer, if you will, uh, for everyone. What's kind of on the agenda uh, for you guys as a staff right now? Well, we're actually just finishing up. our. We're in the downswing of our first camp cycle. Um, We'll actually finish up tomorrow. We started last Saturday. Uh, so we've had a lot of good players on campus this past week. We've got the little guys in, our junior pirates in today, and we had them in yesterday. We'll finish up tomorrow with our uh, our last kicking camp and prospect camp. Uh, so we've had some really good players on campus this week. I uh, got a chance to evaluate a lot of guys. We had our 7-on-7 uh, passing tournament last Saturday, which was huge. Uh, we think we put on the best one in the state. Uh, it's very well attended. Our high school coaches love it. We had uh, teams from the Tidewater here, teams from D.C. We've had some South Carolina teams come. So it, that's a really good uh, really good evaluation piece for us in the summer. And obviously our guys are out there uh, working extremely hard uh, with Coach Connors in the summer, just conditioning, getting bigger and stronger, faster. Um, they're working their tails off uh, every morning we come in. Uh, we see them out there even, either in the weight room or on the, on the practice field and NCAA actually passed some legislation this year where we can actually be with them for a certain period of time during the summer, which has never been the case. Um, so that's been nice to at least get out there and get to watch them work a little bit. We can watch a little bit of film with them for a certain period of time during the summer. So that's been great. So uh, they're just hitting it hard in the off season. We're actually uh, training camp's going to come a little earlier this year. Uh, we're going to start. Uh, we're going to report on August the third. And with school starting a little later this year, uh, a week later actually uh, than it has in the past, we're going to get some extra time in before that first game. So we're just hitting it hard with camps, trying to get our evaluations in on our on our sophomores and juniors for recruiting. Uh, and our guys are hitting it hard, getting ready for the season. That's good to hear. Also good to hear that the NCAA is passing positive legislation uh, in regard to, uh, to football and allowing what coaches can and cannot do. Uh, Brian, a couple more. We'll let you go. Uh, recruiting this year, uh, how, did, you, did you see a big difference in the fact that uh, ECU now in the AAC conference as opposed to Conference USA? Could you actually see the difference in recruiting uh, from a positive standpoint for you guys, knowing that's going to be the case now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um you know, we signed a great class. Uh, I think it got a lot of buzz, not only, you know, here in Greenville, and it's a class that our fans should be proud of, uh, 
but it got it got buzz, you know, within our coaching ranks. You know, I had a lot of buddies of mine, uh, you know, at different programs, you know, calling me uh, after signing day, you know, congratulating me on our class and things like that, some of the players. And some of those players we were able to get, I think the reason it became the class that it did is, uh, and we feel very confident about this, is, was the change to the new league because – uh, just in the two years I had been here in the two recruiting classes, full recruiting classes I had been a part of, you know, that was always coming up in the home. Uh, even if we could get down to a home visit with a kid uh, who we were competing against, against another Power Five conference or, or what have you, uh, it always came up in the home. These kids, wanna, they want to be on a national stage. Uh, they want to get, um, get in front of the nation. They want to display their ability nationally. And that's what this conference allows you to do. And obviously with uh, with the other different teams that are coming in, I know we're taking some with us from Conference USA, uh, but with the other teams coming in, we're obviously hitting different markets now. Uh, you know, you can all, you can almost touch. And you can touch. that means you can touch different markets in recruiting. Uh, they know if they're going to come home every other year and play sometimes, that makes a big difference. You know, people don't think about it like that sometimes. So it's a good it point. definitely made a huge difference, and we're excited about it. Hey, Brian, if people don't realize this, you're responsible behind the scenes for setting up the travel plans, the hotel stays on the road. You do so much that goes unnoticed. Uh, it's a thankless task behind the scenes, so thank you for that. But my question to you is, and we'll let you go after this, uh, with the new comments, with the new schedule now, it's much more geographically reasonable and feasible, I think, uh, certainly in travel, uh, in regard to travel. But have you seen it's been a little bit easier for you in trying to set up some of these away trips now? I know Conference USA was really spread out, but now you have road games, you know, Virginia Tech, Columbia, which certainly you're very used to those two areas, Tampa, Philadelphia, Cincinnati. Uh, has it been an easier transition for you coming from Conference USA to the AC and making travel plans? Yeah, I think the biggest thing, Trent, uh, on that side of it is, you know, just having more options. Obviously, if you're going to a bigger city, uh, you know, you're going to have more options when it comes to, I mean, everything as far as, uh, you know, hotel arrangements, uh, bus charter arrangements, things like that. You know, obviously, the bigger the city, you know, the more opportunity you have uh, to to uh, to get the right place for your team logistically. You know, that's been the biggest thing for me on that side of it. So that's been a that's been a big welcome for me. Um, you know, being able to at least have several options, you know, that coach that I can come back and present to coach and he can pick, you know, whatever's best for us. So it's, you know, it's been good for us in, in a bunch of ways. Brian Irvington, ECU's uh, football, director of football operations and player personnel.